Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we're doing the what's next on Carlos Adames, the middleweight, well, he's not a contender anymore. He's actually the WBC interim middleweight champion right now. Uh, you know, just below Jamal Charlo, which pretty much makes him the number one contender. He's coming off of a dominating third round TKO victory over uh, Juan Montiel as they collided, I believe it was October 8th on Showtime. And um, just a, an outstanding performance by Adames. You know, way to look against the guy who just, uh, who, you know, just last year um, surprisingly fought Jermal Charlo to a, to a, you know, a decision in which Charlo convincingly won. Again, again nobody argues that. It's just the fact that Charlo didn't look, didn't knock uh, Montiel out and he didn't look at his best, it really looked like he was overlooking Montiel, and um, and Montiel fought him, you know, really hard because of it. And Adamas went out there with the interim title on the line and just destroyed um, him. And you know, was already coming off of his career best win, his uh, split decision over Sergey Derevchenko last December. So Adamas is rolling; he's the interim champion. Now the big question is, what's next for Carlos Adamas following that victory? Well, let's start at the top of the middle. We'll run through the top 10 to start at the top of the middleweight division. We start with the number one unified champion, Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. Not going to happen. Triple G already has been ordered to fight Esquiva Falchow um, prior to a, a, a mandatory fight with Arizlandi Lara. If he foregoes either one of those, he'll be stripped of his belt. Um, and the only thing, the only fight I think he would, you know, uh, forego the foul chow fight is if he were to get um, Jaime Minguia in the ring, but I don't think Triple G wants to give up his belts for that, so a fight with Adamas is just not anywhere in the near future for Triple G and Adamas, so not going to happen. Um, number two, well, next up is Jermall Charlo. Demetrius Andrade dropped out of my middleweight top ten. Technically, he was there, but he gave up the belt, so I still have him ranked to Demetrius Andrade, but a fight with Andrade is not in the cards. So I'm not even going to talk about that. But Jamal Charlo, the undefeated WBC champion. Excuse me. That seems to be the fight that should happen next. He's now uh, Adamas is now the interim champion to Charlo's title. So um, I can't see the only the only avenue that I see that this fight doesn't take place next is if the WBC says, all right, we're going to allow Charlo to take a tune-up bout because he hasn't fought in a year and a half, then he'll fight you next in Adamas. But that's just, that's pretty much going to lock up Charlo's entire 2023, and we're still not going to see him in a major fight. So I don't know. I think there's a possibility that WBC could order this fight next uh, between these two. And I think they should, to be honest. Just to light a fire under Charlo's ass and get him in the ring. I think that's what should happen. Either that or Charlo gives up the belt and moves up to 160. And then um, Adamas would become full champ. So, just got to wait and see. I do think there's a, a very solid possibility that, th that this fight happens. But we got to wait and see. Um, next up is Arizlandi Lara, the WBA regular champion. Well, we know, excuse me, we know Lara is in line to fight Triple G, but I guess the agreement that was worked out with the IBF and the WBA on Triple G was that Triple G would be, would fight the IBF mandatory first, which is undefeated Esquiva Falchao from, from Brazil, and then he would have to fight Arizlandi Lara, the regular champion, to Triple G's uh, WBA super title. So... That means Lara and Triple G is not going to happen next. But um, would uh, would Lara and Adamas be possible? And I still don't think so. The reason being, I mean, it would make a lot of sense um, for the two to lock it up, interim champion versus regular champ. Then the, the winner would pretty much be in line for two world titles. But those two world titles are with separate champions. And even though these guys are both with the PBC, um, it looks like other options are just make more sense. Like with Adamas, Charlo. With Lara, Danny Garcia at a catchweight of 155 has been discussed. So 
I think that's the avenue that they're they're gonna try to go. The Lara people and Adamas is just gonna be sitting there waiting for Charlo. Now, next up, Chris Eubank Jr. Um, Eubank, I think, is gonna probably resume his career following the the fallout of the Connor Ben showdown that was supposed to happen. I think he's just gonna resume his career at 160. But I don't know if Eubank and Adamas make sense next. But I wouldn't completely rule it out. But with them. You know, under different promotions now, I, I don't see it happening. Then you got Johnny Big, Alan McAnuley, Kazakh style, the WBO champion. He's with top rank in ESPN. This fight's not not uh, possible. I don't see it. Then uh, Jaime Minguia, um, I don't think so. This is a fight that was they tried to make. Uh, the two sides, you know, couldn't come together. I don't think it's going to happen. I would like to see it. I think there is a possible chance that the winner, they fight for the interim belt, and then the winner is guaranteed Charlo next year. But, and I think that's the avenue they should go, especially if Minguia is willing to stay at 160 and not move up to 168 then. You know, fight this guy for the interim belt, mandatory fight, then the winner gets Charlo. But I don't know, and right now I think it's uh, less than 50-50, you know, less than a 50% chance that that's what happens. Then, um, Ryota Murata, the former WBA champion, he's got ties with top rank in ESPN. He's coming off the loss to uh, to Triple G. I don't see this one being possible. And then finally, a rematch with Sergey Daryavinchenko. To be honest, at this point, I wouldn't be shocked if this fight were to take place just because the first fight was close. The next fight would be a 12-rounder, and Adam and they're both with the PBC, and Adamus is trying to stay busy if the Charlo fight doesn't happen. So that's, uh, you know, to wrap it up, I honestly believe that the Charlo fight should happen next. I think that's about 50-50, maybe more, that that is the fight that goes down. But I do, I do think the WBC might grant Charlo an optional defense just to shake off some rust ahead of a, a potential showdown with Adames, and then Adames would have to fight somebody else in the interim. And I think even a Derevinchenko rematch would make sense. And, um, you know, there's other guys, but they might just want to keep him busy. So he's the guy fighting Charlo next. So we got to wait and see. But that was a nice win for Adamas. And he's kind of put himself in position to put his foot on the throat of Charlo and mandate that fight. But we got to see. So. That's what's next on WBC Interim Middleweight Champion, Carlos Adamas. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.